right. Hello, guys. How we doing? All good. You want to start us off with the opening statement, Coach? Do I have to? You do not. We can go straight oh, okay. to questions. I'm joking. No, uh, I just, again, very proud of our team. Listen, uh, hard fought SEC West victory on the road at Auburn. Extremely tough place to play. Matter of fact, I believe it's the only game they've lost in Auburn this year. Uh, that, that place is always a tough place to play. They always play different. I've coached there. They, they play different there. Their players play different, everything. And we knew it and proud of our guys to battle. We knew it was going to be a four quarter game. Uh, uh, guys fought. The lines of scrimmage are very important on both sides. But I thought we lost them on defense there for a while. I thought they uh, they ran the football, made some plays on us up front. We didn't play as well as we had been. Uh, offensively, the offensive line was outstanding. But then we gained them back in defense late in that fourth quarter and the way we stood up. And, and uh, I think it was a hard-fought victory. Our kids played hard, made critical plays at critical times in the game, answered calls in the game, had opportunities in the game. You know, I thought the drive before half was huge. We got down 10 to seven, got a score right before the half again, got back ahead. They come out and get momentum, get a score. We get a, uh, that's the drive. We hit the official with the ball and then didn't then convert third. And then uh, they come back and I thought our defense stood up, even though they give up two big drives, give a big drive. And then that one there, they, they got it stopped in the red zone and kept it to a field goal in a one score game. And we were able to go right back and uh, get a, get the lead back was huge. Uh, another huge play in that game is Caden Davis making a tackle on a kickoff. We, we uncharacteristically did not do a good job of covering that kick. And uh, uh, we had some guys that we, we got to get that fixed, which that, we've been outstanding on that. And K, that play was outstanding by Caden Davis. That was a huge play in the game. We were able to get a stop there, then get it and go back and score again. And then the defense got us off the field again. And we were able to eat clock on offense, eat over five and a half minutes off the clock and drive down and got a big field goal right there. And Seth made a big kick. So all parts when the game got on the line made catches the other thing the scramble by uh, kellen in the fourth on the third down in the last drive was huge the catch by anias was amazing uh spiller was awesome in the game we admire you know uh anias our offensive line was outstanding our defense like i say got going in the end right there our secondary did a good job and you know our kicking game we know we had some flaws but missed a field goal and had some of those things but made it when we had to so just proud of a hard fought uh, sec west road win uh, I thought it was very mature of our team, the way we played and handled those situations. So continue to grow and got to get better. Questions? All right, let's start off with Chip Howard from Sports Talk. Jimbo, have you had any contact with Coach Kiffin, and do you have a feel for whether this game will be played Saturday night or not? No, I have not had any contact with him. And right now we're preparing it as we're playing this weekend right now. We're, we're full go and ready to practice today and, and breaking film down and all that good stuff for the last two days. Matter of fact, all this weekend and Sunday and today and everything else. Any contingency plans if the game wasn't played? And, no, no, no. I'm, I'm all go. We're good for Ole Miss right now. All right, let's go to Ole Buchanan from TexAx.com. Uh, maybe just know that your birthday we can we do not have to hear you <laughs> can you not hear me again you're getting older your, your voice is, is getting crummy As you get older you're losing your voice i can't i mean you can't get that fixed or something i mean that happened that happened with old age <laughs> uh, uh, my players would be happy if that happened with old age with me <laughs> <laughs> yeah my voice is bad enough as it is um <laughs> Anyway, uh, regarding uh, your running game, a couple things. First of all, maybe I missed it before, and you've done. But uh, how long y'all been? Uh, have you been working with the uh, the eye with uh, with Isaiah as a fullback and getting him to? We've done it all year. If you go back, we did it in Mississippi State game. Okay. We did that in the Mississippi State game. We've done it earlier this year. Did it a couple times. So we've done that off and on. And and then what I want to ask you about also is. Uh, uh, how do you come up with your rotation with the running backs? Is it something that you pre-arrange, or do you just go by feel? Or well, a little bit. We 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 know we know we want to get guys carries. We want to get them in the game, certain series of the game. But also, you have to be flexible depending on the way the game's going, the flow of the game, and the temperament of the game, and the way things are happening. We feel very comfortable putting all those guys in at any time. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, next up is Gabe Bach from TechSox.com. Yeah, Jimbo, Bobby Brown has gotten to the quarterback in each of his last five games. It, you got to go back before Miles Garrett for somebody to do that as an individual at AM. What, what's been the key with Bobby to taking his game to the next level? As a well, junior? first of all, I think Bobby has outstanding ability, size. He's learning to use it. I think 
Elijah's doing a great job with him technique wise. And he's learning to be a technical a lot just with power and speed. And, you know, you play guys in this league, everybody, eventually you play guys as big, as strong as you. He's becoming a better technician. He's playing and understanding the scheme of the defense. And I think Mike and those guys and Elijah or Terry are all doing a good job of scheming to, to create some space for him. And he's doing a good job taking advantage of it. And a quick follow-up on the running backs. How fired up are you as a play designer and a play caller with these three backs? Well, with the do-it-all guy and Anias, the emergence of Achain to go with Spiller, of what, what this offense could do in the run game and the throw game moving forward. Well, I mean, it does. They all can see the thing about it, they all can catch a football. And uh, the thing about it, you can get multiple looks, multiple personnel, multiple groups and the guys, create matchups. And it also gives you a lot of, you know, where Spiller doesn't carry the complete load. Because you're talking about a long season, like, like we're eight games in. Now, we only had a 10-game season this year as far as we're going to have. Next, you know, you're, you have a 12, and then if you're in a playoff 13, four, that's, that's a lot of bangs and bruises on the body. So, I mean, the development of those guys is huge, and they each bring a little different style. So, it's very unique and allows you to do different things. So, it's, the more guys we can get involved, the better. And, and those guys are doing an outstanding job. Very proud of them. Thank you, Jimbo. Thank you. Let's go to Brenton Zwerderman from the Houston Chronicle. Jimbo, your conditioning in the second half in the fourth quarter looked looked really good. I wanted to ask you about your emphasis on conditioning, not just during a season, but in the off season, and also how you kept them conditioned during that late three week layoff as well. Well, we grinded them on that three week layoff. I mean, I'm gonna tell you that we ran them to death. We practiced them. To, we practiced. Them. I mean, they were full hard practice, like camp practices. We went right back at it. And then I uh, got our guys, you know, the normal game weeks like we do. And we go hard, man. Our, our practice during the week, our, our players always say the games seem harder than the practices. I mean, the practices seem harder than the games. And that's the way we want it. We grind them out. And like I, said, I always say that you don't win because you want to. You win because you train to. And you learn that you, you can't find out about yourself till you hit those tire marks. Our fourth quarter programs, our conditioning, our summer conditioning, all those things are designed to find out where we are mentally, not just physically. The mental part's got to be there before you get in shape, but then you got to mentally go there and allow yourself to go there and know what you're capable of doing. And we try to stress that. Schmitty does a great job in the offseason. We put together the way the things we do and then uh, the way we practice, I think it's starting to pay off. It really do. That was my follow-up, just kind of a testament to the job that Jerry Schmidt has done as your, as your conditioning coach. And no doubt. Coach. Those guys do a phenomenal job in our weight and strength conditioning group. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Robert Cessna from the Bryan College Station Eagle. Yeah, uh, Jimbo, how soon could we see Elijah Blades get in a game? And has any other players that opt out to talk to you about coming back? Yeah, uh, Keyshawn Brown is, wanting to, is coming back into practice. And Elijah, and I don't know when we'll see Elijah. We're, we're doing really well. We'll see where his development is and where he's practicing. He seemed to have good practices last week for the most part. So, you know, we'll, we'll play accordingly. And I wanted to ask, my qu original question was on Davis. Does he make a lot of tackles in practice? Who, Caden? Yes, you yes. About? No, no. He yes, ain't making yes, no practice in practice. But I'm going to tell you what, you don't realize he's an excellent athlete. I mean, he really is. He is an excellent athlete. And uh, I've been blessed over the years to have some – Graham Gano was a phenomenal athlete. Dustin Hopkins was. Roberto was. All of our kickers. I mean, we've had some guys. And I'm going to tell you, when you have a kicker there, you don't think about that. When he's athletic and can get a guy on the ground as, as a last resort, man, that's a big thing. Now, and he's a big, long, athletic guy, Caden is, and he can run. I mean, he is – you and his speeds, when we run in the offseason, his speeds are up there with with some of our really good skill guys. I mean, he, he's a very good athlete, very strong too. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Tyler Shaw from KBTX. Coach, for a lot of this season, you know, run game has is, is obviously been important to the offense and, and controlling the clock. And I'm curious – you know, when you look at Ole Miss, how important is that game going to be controlling the clock against a, an offense like Well, I mean, you want to control the clock. But here's the key to controlling the clock. You score points on the drives. If you don't, you know, time management and control of the clock is only good if you score points. You know what I mean? I mean, like today, probably time management right now is least important in winning for most people because everybody's explosive and you create big plays. But if you're doing that and you help your defense and you're scoring points at the time and you break the rhythm of the offense, then that's when it becomes very vital. And I think that's the key. We're scoring touchdowns and scoring points in those drives. And it's very critical, not just eating the clock, but how we do it and making the plays in the red zone. If you look, our efficiencies in the red zone have been really good, except for the other day, our third down efficiencies have been outstanding. And that's the other thing you do when you eat like that, you got to be a very good third down team, but you got to be in third and manageable situations, which we weren't in the LSU game. So all those things combined with clock management is very important. All right, next up is Mike Lucas from KX. 
Hey, Coach, you mentioned it last week, and then you mentioned it again after Auburn, uh, how your team's continuing to learn how to win. When you say that, what actually goes into learning how to win? To playing the next play and not feeling sorry for yourself and not worrying about the outcome, not looking at the scoreboard and saying the sky is falling. It's play the next situation. What do I have to do? How do I have to do it? That team's that team is competing hard. I got to raise my game. I can't feel sorry for myself. I can't look for a hole to hide in and say it's not my fault. Instead, I grab a guy and say, "Come on, we're going into this battle." And it's all it's all a psychological disposition of how to compete, and that's what it is. And, and don't look don't look for answers to lose. Find ways to win and, and have success. And if you don't, you put your head on the pill at night and you go to sleep. And you don't worry about it. But it's attacking those situations, not let. The pressure is only if you allow that you worry about outcomes. We worry about the next play, what my assignment is. I know what to do, how to do it. There's no pressure. I know the answer to the test. So let me go do it and the things that go on. And I think you have to – there's perseverance and not worrying about outcomes and looking at scoreboards and the way the flow, ebbs and flows of the game. You want Momentum in the game is going against us. You know how you change it? Go make good plays right in a row, a bunch of them right in a row and play with consistency. And I think we're learning that and not getting caught in the flows of the game and, and learning to control what we can control. And we can change the momentums when we play well. And if I could ask one more, Coach, real quick. Uh, when you look at Corral, the Ole Miss quarterback, is he as good as some of the other guys you guys have faced this year? Like Trask? Oh, no doubt. This guy's outstanding, man. You watch him, his arm action, his accuracy, his ball down the field, creates plays with his arm, creates with his legs, very tough, competitive, athletic. I'm very impressed with him now. I, th I think he's a very, very, very good football player. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Let's go to Zach Taylor from WTAW. Yeah, Jimbo, I was just curious about this. From your vantage point, what do you think the term uh, convincing win means? And, and do you think that that should be something that people take into account when ranking teams? SEC wins are very convincing. I promise you that. Anytime you win the SEC West, it's very convincing. The best league in ball, the best players in ball, they're all very convincing. But, I mean, listen, convincing wins, that's an, it's an opinion. you got to base things on facts. And we're in a – and, and our world in the media right now has got to be my opinion and not what's based on facts or how I feel. Or, and then expert, I mean, you got to let the, the people who are on the committees and those things do it. You can't worry about that. And, you know, you got to play what you do, do what you do, control what you control. And then convincing is in the eyes of the beholder. You know what I mean? I mean, in my opinion. And I think, you know, where is running somebody out of the stadium and embarrassing somebody? Where has that ever become good? Where, 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 what, what dignity is in, in that? I'm not saying you don't do that, and guys don't. I'm not. I'm just using that for an example. Does that mean convince? I go score as many points as I can. I control the game. There's a lot of things that go into this. How about just play your best football? Do it the right way. Do it with class. Do it with dignity. Those are convincing wins against good opponents. Uh, in your eyes, do you feel like you guys have a lot of convincing wins this year? We're playing in the SEC West. Those are like I just said. SEC West wins are very convincing. I probably and SEC East wins. SEC wins period are very convincing. Now that's up to everybody else. I don't worry about. I'm not worried about what they think. I'm worried about how we play. Thanks. Let's go to Andrew Hattersley from Giggum 247. Yeah, hey, Coach. Given how dynamic Isaiah Spiller, Devon Outchain, and uh, Anaya Smith have been, have, has there been any consideration to getting them all on the field together at the same time? Uh, they have been, I believe. They have been, I believe, at the time. We're, we're getting old wishbone like Oklahoma. <laughs> we'll get an old wishbone, give them one of the fullback, two tailbacks, and we'll run, we'll run the old bone and, and come downhill at you. Hey, you might give me an idea. Now the teams better get ready to prepare for it. But, no, we we have uh, – I, I believe we, we haven't put them all, all together, but at, at different rotations and groups. But, yeah, you, you never know what could happen. And then is there any expectation on when Damani Richardson might return or any idea when he might be We're back? hoping day to day. I mean, you know, anytime, and hopefully he'll get back soon because he's a very important part. That's the other thing. We played, you know, had a big part of our defense out with him right there last week. So uh, that was outstanding, still outstanding by our defense, especially the way we rose up in the fourth quarter and played great D. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Next up is Mark Passwaters from Rivals.com. Uh, Coach, I wanted to ask about the defense, the play of the defensive ends, especially in the fourth quarter. It may not have had great numbers, but they were real key elements on, uh, you know, kind of shutting that defense down. I was wondering if you talk a little bit about the play of Lee Allen and uh, Tyree. I think both of them played really well. And I think Hansford had a big sack in there, too. There was a big play in that game, too, when we were running out the clock. If you don't remember, Hansford not only was sacking uh, Bo, but he got his right arm where he couldn't throw that ball away, which got him down, which ate about another 20, 25 seconds off that goes, I think, when I noticed, too, was big. But Liao and Tyree have been outstanding. And our hands are playing. They play with great discipline. They're big. They've got big guys, small guys that can rush, but they play with physicality. They understand leverage. They understand contain. 
and they run their stunt games very well and, and how to play. But uh, those guys have really been good now. I mean, they really have. They're really good players. There was a, a comment that Jalen made in the post game uh, Saturday about we prepare for the fourth quarter. We practice for this. Is that just the physical nature of practice, or is there something that special that you guys do to prepare for? We, fourth? We, we believe in that. The way we practice, how hard we practice, the physicality in which we practice, and the tempo at which we practice every day with the good on good. I mean, we finish up. You got to remember, we finishing up with good on good at the end of practice, along with we've already done two other periods of good on good in the middle of practice, along with scout work. So, you know, our kids, the way we practice, it, we, we, they have understanding now the toughness that goes with it and the mental toughness and, and the conditioning. It, it, it's happening and it's helping. All right. Thanks. Let's go to Chuck Carlton for the Dallas Morning News and then Randy McElvoy. Jimbo, there was a lot of opportunity the last couple of weeks for your team to, you know, get distracted, whether it was the COVID layoffs or the playoff or whatever. What does it say about your guys that they've retained their focus? Well, I think the leadership of our team, the guys are keeping guys on task. I mean, coaches, you can remind them all day long, but I think it's the leadership of our team that's reinforcing the things we say. And they're managing the team. They're running the team. We're, we're setting the rules. And that was leaders, the leadership of that team is doing an outstanding job of that. And I, I think it's the bond in which they have, the respect in which they have for each other. And I, and I say that. You, everybody says you love each other, you trust you. But listen, you got to respect the guy on your team first. And when you start there, then you get the love, the trust, and all the things that go with it. And I think those things are coming together as a football team. All right, let's go to Randy McElvoy with KPRC in Houston. And then we'll go back to Owen. Hey, Jimbo, can you uh, uh, address and tell us how impressed you are with the chemistry that Mond and, and Watermeyer have developed and this specifically Watermeyer's game and it's kind of what he brings and what sets him apart out there for you guys? Well, I think uh, they have each other. They've worked so much together. But uh, Jalen is because is, is, he can run like a big guy. He can get in and out of cuts like a small guy. His body is big. He can control it. He's got great ball skills, and he understands how to get his body in position. And Kellen has great trust in him, and he's an easy guy to read, if that makes any sense. When you're running, there are certain receivers you, you play with, and I've been with some good ones. I play, you know, sometimes they're just hard to read. You're not sure exactly. You end up getting the ball. But there's some guys, man, you just get that flow. You can tell by his body movement when he's going to stick it, when he's going to not, and you get the trust of each other. And and they and, they, and Kellen will put balls in holes where sometimes he might not or, or let him be up high and where he likes it. And there's a tremendous chemistry between those two. And But I think it's because both of them do their job very well. It makes it easy. All right, we got two more questions on the queue. We'll go to Owen Buchanan and then Chip Howard. Uh, yeah, Coach, I just wanted to ask you about the guys that uh, uh, have wanted to opt back in. Do they, do they, do you think it's just, hey, simply because you are doing so well, or do they give you any other indication? No, I mean, I like this information, when you make a decision, information changes over time. Sometimes you reflect on your decision, some things change in your life, some things happen in your life, some things, whatever. And I think those are a lot what's going on. And, then, and there's a, listen, there was a lot of turmoil and confusion going on at that time in America. We had a lot of unknowns. You have a lot of young people making decisions. And now they make decisions based off the information they have now. And I think that's it. I think, you know, and wanting to come back. And like I said, that door has always been open. They've always been a part of our family and we want to help them. And the big thing we've done, we've given, made them all for two or three weeks. They have, they've conditioned before they've ever gotten back on the field. We made sure they were physically ready to do it. And now those guys are getting back in position. And if they can help us down the road, then they can. All right, thanks. All right, we'll wrap it up with Chip Howard from Sports Talk. Jimbo, you mentioned their quarterback. What about Metcalf at receiver? He's leading the nation in a lot of categories. Oh. They move him all around, double move you, catch you short, catch you deep, run with the ball, make you miss, plays in the backfield. I mean, that guy does it. Punt returns, he does everything, man. That guy, he, he's, a heck of, eight, eight, he's a heck of a football player. I think he's, what, 90 catches in eight games? Is that right? That's does that sound close. right? Yep. It's something like that. I mean, 11, 12 catches. Yeah, I mean, his numbers will be through the roof in the full season, man. He is having an outstanding year. Really good football player. So when you have a guy like that, um, I guess it's pretty obvious, but but you have to pay special attention and account for him on every play. Oh, no doubt. Where he lines up, what it triggers, what it doesn't trigger. And it's not just him now. They've got other guys that developed, have really come on and made a lot of – and they, they run the football. They still run the football very well with their backs and the quarterback. So they've got a lot of packages. But he's you, you have to be aware of where he's at. There's no doubt. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's all the questions we have for you, Coach. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you. Y'all have a great day. Happy birthday.